Hello, welcome back to my house extension and renovation series. If you haven't been here before, I'm Georgina Bisbee and I vlog and make videos about all sorts of topics, particularly around technology and home improvement, because that's what we're living through at the moment. We are in the process of finishing a house extension and we've had the structure up for a while. Um, because we didn't have the budget to do the whole thing at once, we've taken a bit of a build now, finish later approach. And we're taking on quite a few of the jobs ourselves as well to save some cash all under the watchful eye of my dad, who's been guiding us through this project and helping out himself um, as and when he's able to fit us in. Um, so I realised that I've made lots of videos from this room, but I've never actually really taken you around this room before. So before we finish it, because our focus has moved down here now, um, I thought I'd just give you a quick tour and show you some of the jobs that we've been doing in the past few weeks to get this room ready basically to plasterboard and to finish it. So if I explain the room itself perhaps to start with, this is the original kitchen that I'm standing in now. Um, when we moved into this house um, eight, nine years ago, we made a couple of changes to it at the time. We didn't have the money to build the extension, but we the kitchen was a little bit um, pokey. We had basically a larder in this space here. We then had a huge hallway and a quite tiny kitchen, so there was no room to even have a seat in the kitchen at that time. So we basically pushed back the wall of the kitchen into the hallway, ended up with a much smaller hallway, um, but it gave us this space here uh, which has seen better days, but we created the space here so we had somewhere to sit and to eat. Um, didn't have room for an actual table itself, but we made this makeshift thing we kind of came up with after a tour of Ikea. So that worked really well for us, and as the kids were little, we managed to slot a high chair in there and it was brilliant. Um, but we got to the stage where we wanted more space, so we built the extension. So we're now probably going to actually move the hallway wall back to where it originally was here. Um, because I think otherwise it's going to be really out of proportion with the house having that tiny little hallway and then the big extension here. So that's on our list to do, but I suppose that means that the, if you imagine the extension now, it's going to start here basically, you're going to have a, a doorway into the room and we're going to be working from this space backwards. So you can still see the outline of where the original kitchen was. If I just stand here, this is where we have the doorway in uh, which went to the outside basically. Um, and, the, and the annex, there was an annex bit here before. Um, so we knocked through all of that and we built all of this space here. Behind me there we're going to have a utility room and we've got a toilet tucked down there as well. And then this just opens out onto the space itself where we've got dining table, we're going to have some seating. Just move the fridge over there temporarily but we are going to have some units along there. And this is going to be a peninsula. Um, we decided a peninsula rather than an island because I'm not a fan of islands unless it's a really huge space that you're working with because I think they tend to dominate the space and it doesn't leave you that much room for everything else such as dining and I wanted this to have a bit of a leisure element to it as well so that we do have some um, sofas and you know relaxation space as well so we've decided to stick to the peninsula. The next step is basically going to be plasterboarding and in preparation for that what we've been doing is if you look up on the ceiling here, we've been adding these joists in over the past couple of weekends. That's so that we can bring the level to the same, the ceiling level to the same level as the extension itself. So we can then have a level ceiling the whole way through, so it looks like it was always meant to be here. Obviously you can have steps and stage ceilings, and that's absolutely fine. But we felt in this space that was the easiest thing to probably do. Uh, so we've still got to add some sound insulation, rock wall sound insulation we've been using out there into this space here and then that will be complete and we also need to drill holes in the joist to create the um, space of the wire for the lights so we're going to probably have spotlights similar to what we had in the original kitchen just running throughout the whole kitchen so that's something we're working out at the moment how how and where to put those and the tip from my dad was that if you make sure that you get them in exactly the right space even draw a marker on the floor it makes it really easy just to pull it through the plasterboard once you've done that so that's a job for next weekend um, but now you can get an idea of the space itself and we pretty much know where everything's going to go now we're going to have some kind of bench seating underneath the window there the table we've been using this table which is just an outdoor one I actually bought from the tip and scrubbed up um, but that's been perfect just to give us an idea of how we're going to use the space and we have been as I've said before using the space um, so we've been living and dining in here as much as possible. Uh, so that then gives you this, we will have this nice bit of space here, that's the idea. That's the window out to the garden there. And through here, this is our bifold doors, and this is where we're going to have a decking, level access onto the decking, 
which also joins up with our lounge room in there as well. Okay, so as ever, we've had loads of decisions to make the past couple of weeks. There's always a lot of decisions to make when you're doing a house extension and any renovation work. Sometimes you get that just decision fatigue. But a few really important ones that we've had to decide on, and sometimes sometimes you don't feel like the decisions matter that much, but these ones we felt did, um, and we had to decide on over like, the past couple of weeks, were the electrical sockets, but also things like where we were going to put the TV. Now, this is something we've been thinking about for quite a while, um, and we decided the only place that would really work in the space is up here behind me. So we've worked out and planned for that to go there, but also we put in Cat5 so that we can, increasingly everyone's streaming things and watching YouTube and things on the TV. So we wanted to make sure we had decent connection in here, otherwise the kids will be off and they won't spend any time in here. So we've put the Cat5 cable ready to go in there, and also we've got a connection here so that we can hardwire our computer into the internet as well and get really good fast connection for us in here, because we envisage that this will be a space where we'll end up sitting at this table here, probably on our computers and our laptops working quite a bit as well. So that was uh, important to get right over the past couple of weeks. Also, in relation to the sockets, we decided to go for, because it kind of blends from a kitchen space with some units and some worktop down into the dining space and the leisure space, we just decided to, we ran a laser from where the um, sockets are in the original kitchen and we just thought we'll keep that the same height um, throughout the whole space. So we've done that so they're all ready to go. So another thing obviously to think about in kitchens is the whole workflow and something I realised and I changed my mind about once we knocked through and actually bought a new tumble dryer which has been out here just behind me is that in terms of the laundry space and the utility room space I wanted to be able to access the washing machine and dryer as easily as possible. I didn't want to have to come through a door, go around the corner, come back round again because obviously laundry you're doing every day all the time, sometimes several times a day. So I thought if I can just open this door here and then having my washing machine and my dryer there, then I can be kind of chucking stuff in and out and doing more than one job at once like we all do. And it just takes that extra step out each time, which if it is something you do on a daily basis, definitely worth trying to make those uh, time savings. So another decision that we need to make over the next couple of weeks is about the floor and down here is the original tiling job that Stephen and I did and this is what gave us the false confidence that we were good at tiling and that we could take on the tiling of the whole bathroom which if you've seen me talking about that you'll uh, hear about how traumatic that was but we aren't going to have tiles in the new um, kitchen bit because we wanted something a little bit more forgiving and we wanted something a bit softer and so we're going to go some, for something along the lines of Candine, um, just getting some samples at the moment, doing a bit of research into that. Um, so that will obviously go throughout, so we'll replace all of this as well. But the other decision that we are really struggling with, and I would appreciate anyone's advice, insight, experience on this, is which configuration to go for in terms of the sink and the hob. So we're going to have our ovens over there and the little one that we're going to have over there. Our fridge is going to be just behind me here. So we're going to have our little triangle working out, but we've then got, with the peninsula space here, we've got the option to either have the sink here, but we're going to move it back a bit, and then we'll have a bar area over the top. Um, or we could put the hob here and have the sink over here. So it's going to be one or the other, sink, hob, or hob, sink. Um, my initial feeling is that having the hob near a space where people are going to be sitting the other side isn't that safe. I know that's probably completely over the top and I know a lot of people do have it there. And looking at what other people have done, it seems to be a kind of 50-50 divide um, between what people do. At the moment, we don't have a dishwasher, so we spend a lot of time at the sink because we're always washing up. Uh, we are going to have a dishwasher once we've finished all of this, so it may change the way that we use this kitchen anyway. Uh, in which case, it may be that we spend more time at the hob and therefore that's the bit that you want facing out. I don't know. I know people that have done one thing and regretted it. I know people that have even changed it afterwards. So I think that's what's putting the pressure on us to feel like it's a really big decision and we just can't make it. Um, my instinct's still saying sink here and hob there, but that's because I'm a health and safety nut um, and then my other half is trying to persuade me otherwise. So we'll see who wins um, very shortly. But yeah, any recommendations, please post them in the comments below. Um, so that's it really, that's a quick tour of what we're doing, what we're up to, the jobs that we've got on our list over the next few weeks and I will absolutely share it all with you as it's finished and show you any interesting work that we're doing along the way. Um, if you enjoyed this video as always please do give it the thumbs up, please come back soon and subscribe and all the rest of that. Um, but thank you very much for watching and that's it for today, bye bye.